I'm going to be doing a Tidy Tuesday screencast today, uh, but I'm going to be doing something a little bit funky. Uh, I'm going to be using a library that I've been working on called Suba. That's a Python library to do quick scrappy data analyses. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to first start setting up my environment in Python, um, then look at Tidy Tuesday really quickly, and then I'll talk a little bit more about this library Suba before I get started. Um, so really fast, I'm going to set up my virtual environment. Um, normally, uh, these just activate automatically with the directory I'm in, uh, but I'm going to create a special one um, for this analysis. All right, so that's cooking. Uh, it's taking its sweet time, if you don't know why. Um, okay, so it's activated, um, and then I'm going to pip install uh, pandas, plot9, uh, suba, jupyter, just jupyter, that'll get the notebook. Um, I use something called jupytext, uh, which lets me use different types of files as notebooks. Um, and then last, I'm going to install black cell magic. Um, and I'll show later, this helps me format uh, the code uh, while I go. Alright, so that looks pretty good to me. Um, so while that runs, um, let's take a look at Tidy Tuesday. So if you haven't heard, Tidy Tuesday is a really cool project <clears throat> by Thomas Mock. And what it is, is it's every week uh, they release a new data set. Um, and then people can share, they can sort of spin off this data set, do data analyses, and share them. Uh, most of the sharing goes on on Twitter. Let's see. <clears throat> Maybe I can pull up. Yeah. All right. So let's look at this hashtag. Um, so you can see that uh, it's a really cool project where you have these data sets and then people can show what they're doing with them. So it's a really nice way to see what people are doing, uh, different ways of doing things, um, and also different tools that people make use of. Um, all right. So I'm going to open up the latest Tidy Tuesday. Um, this one is a Bob Ross data set. Uh, it's based off of a 538 article. Um, I'll look at this. So I, I did see the data set really quickly um, based on some of the things people are sharing. Um, and I glanced through this article uh, quickly. Um, so Bob Ross was a painter on PBS, uh, best known for painting happy little trees um, and other things. Um, and what happened is someone coded up uh, details from every painting he's done. I think it's a few hundred, uh, and there are 67 possible keywords they could have coded. So for each painting, 67 possible uh, boxes to check. Does it have a tree? Does it have two trees? Um, things like that. So they do some interesting analyses counting um, how common different things are in the paintings, um, and things like that. Um, Alright, so this is the repo um, and the most useful thing to get started is just this snippet here which lets you read it in right away uh, what I'm going to do is because this is our code I'm going to copy out the URL and then I'll open it in Python um, so this is still going um, well that's running uh, I'll show you Suba a little bit so uh, this is the repo for Suba mhow slash Suba um, so Suba is a library that does uh, dplyr-like syntax in Python. Um, dplyr is a library that's common in the R community. Um, and it really, it emerged out of a need I had to... Um, so I've been programming Python for over a decade, and uh, like I would say six or seven years ago, I thought eventually I'd move all my data analyses to Python from R. But surprisingly, it, it I noticed that over time it moved in the other direction. Um, and that's happened more uh, at my work as a data scientist where um, I found increasingly uh, that I've been reaching for R. So I would love to push it back into Python and do everything in Python. And Suba is an attempt to get up to speed and to be able to keep pace with people uh, where I work, uh, especially my boss D-Rob, who is uh, very fast, uh, is sort of a speed demon. Um, so this is uh, Suba. Um, 
and Suba, in a sense, uh, is meant to do uh, simple operations. So group some data, filter out rows of data, add or remove columns, and then do aggregates. So split apply aggregate. Um, so this is what Suba looks like. Um, the operations proceed down a pipe, so step by step. So this is a data set called empty cars, which I'm sure a lot of people have seen before. Um, and it's just going down step by step. So it's being grouped by cylinder, and then it's being summarized so that each group um, gets one value, uh, the average mean for the group of uh, HP. This is horsepower. Um, see, this is, all right, so it's done loading. Let me open a notebook, and I can uh, show it off a little bit more. All right, so I'm going to open this. I'm also going to 2019-0806, so Bob Ross, all right, we're cooking. Um, let me just import this to show off a little bit of SUBA code. All right, so this is the empty cars library. Um, this is what the data looks like. Um, in here, we've grouped the data by cylinders. Uh, and then for each cylinder group, so either four, six, or eight, calculated the average horsepower within each group. So you can see the more cylinders a car has, the more horsepower it tends to have. Um, I think before I start, one important question to answer is why do why is this setup useful? Um, so this is just a pandas data frame here, empty cars, uh, and you can do this. Um, if I want to take the average HP here. I can do this pretty easily. I'm going to write this more generally as a lambda um, just for illustration. So notice that here I've also calculated average HP overall. Um, all right, so these th two things match. Um, notice this one output a series, panda series. Um, but if I group it uh, and then I do an aggregate, um, it outputs a data frame. And um, that can be a little bit challenging. If you're doing data analyses, oftentimes you don't know what you want to group by or if you want to group beforehand. So it's useful to have the same output, whether it's grouped or not. Um, and that's one thing that SUBA makes sure to do. The other is I don't, SUBA doesn't use any uh, clever indexing. Ideally, SUBA resets the index each time. So you'll notice cylinder here is put back on the data frame. Here it's an index. Um, this is just to help me move a little faster through analyses. Um, so I would say this goal overall is to make sure that whether data is grouped or ungrouped, um, you get the same kinds of outputs. Uh, the other thing is you may notice that SUBA doesn't use lambdas. It exposes a special underscore object um, that just lets you write the expression directly. So I could replace this with a lambda, lambda underscore, and it would work. Um, but uh, when you're doing a lot of data analysis, it helps. Um, I would say to just be able to write these expressions themselves. This is also critical for SUBA's ability to, um, to write SQL code as well. All right, so that's a little behind SUBA. Um, let's get into the data. So uh, maybe I'll leave this here uh, in case people want it. Uh, and then I'll call this, uh, what is SUBA? All right, here we go. Uh, I'm going to go Bob Ross analysis. Great. I'm going to click this. This is a table of contents, um, which is pretty useful. You may also see me open this scratch pad, um, which I use a lot. All right, so let's pull the data. All right, um, great. So there's the string. I'm going to use pandas. Do I have pandas loaded? I don't. So, yep. I'm actually just going to copy these here as well. What I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to import everything from SUBA for now. So it's all there. I'm also going to import from plot nine. Uh, everything. One other important thing I'll probably have to do is suppress um, 
warning. So Plot9 has a lot of, uh, depending on some version issues, you can get a lot of um, warnings in Plot9. So I'm going to uh, suppress them. Actually, I'll wait. Uh, let me wait till we hit the warnings, and then I'll show you um, what that code does. I don't know. All right. Great. So we're reading the data. I'm going to call it Bob Ross. All right. Uh, let's take a look. Um, great. So these are the episodes. Um, notice that we have an episode, we have a title, um, and then it looks like a lot of coded tags. This is a pretty wide uh, data frame. Um, one useful thing you can do uh, is you might want to take all these other, notice all these other columns are kind of the same type of thing. They're a tag, a specific type of tag. So what we can do is um, go to gather it. Um, and what I'll do is I'll I want to get everything except for um, episode and except for a title. I also forgot how gather works, so that might not be right. Yep, let's do, um, let's see. Yeah, I need um, a key of value and then all these uh, selection arcs. So uh, I'm going to name it um, tag and then. Uh, I'm just going to call it value. It's probably a bad idea. Great. So, um, oh wait, this is, we need, um, let's see. What's going to happen if we do, uh, I'm going to check something out here. All right, so. I'm going to do uh, apple frame to apple frame to uh, I don't know the end. Great. So we did it. Um, what this says is it's a way of selecting columns. Um, let me show you really fast. Uh, this is a verb. Uh, Suba uses, um, so you can say something like, I want the column apple frame to something else. And this is, it will select all of those columns of data. Um, another thing worth noting is um, what this looks like. So this is a special object, this underscore, that generates expressions. So um, you could think of it as a, like a symbolic call. It hasn't actually done something, it just represents what you might want to do. So you want to slice from apple frame uh, onward. All right, so that's the gist. Um, so we've gathered all of the uh, tags here and their values. Um, I think probably I'm going to call this Tidy Bob. Nah, Tidy Ross, uh, we can't. Life's too short to really. Uh, debate that and um, so tidy Bob um, so we can count uh, not the tags because they're all zero or one what we really need to do is probably um, undo that here uh, because we kept all the zeros or ones let's just filter out and keep the ones so what I'm going to do is I want value uh, to be equal to one. Uh, this is one important thing to note is that Suba uh, overrides the default filter. Um, all right, so now we have all the values. Um, great. And what we can do now is we can count uh, each tag. Uh, okay, so. This is unsorted. Let's do sort equals true. That's an upper camps true. It's definitely an R thing. All right. So we can see that um, a lot of uh, paintings have trees. Uh, and we know that because the total. Oh, that's my bad. Wait. Bob Ross. 
Bob Ross's 403 uh, paintings. We also could have, um, is it title? Let's see. Nope, sure isn't. Let's see. Uh, oh, it's all, you know, I think it's uppercase. Yeah. Yeah, so we can count, we can also count the number of tags here. Um, great. So, these two things together are useful. I'm going to uh, just grab the first, say, three, just to make it easier. Um, and then I also want to see the most. So this will just be the most common tags, the most common titles. Right, so the most common, the painting with the most tags is Lakeside Cabin. Um, the painting, the tag with the most paintings is um, tree, right? Trees rule the roost, followed by trees. Um, great. Here, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to print the shape just so we know uh, it was originally 403 rows, um, 69 columns. One thing we should also maybe check is whether, um, so I saw it's coded 0 and 1. What I don't know is whether there are values um, that are greater than 1. Uh, uh, what I'm just going to do here is I'm just going to count the values and see. Yeah, they're all 1. So this is coded true or false. Um, we could change it to be a boolean. Uh, I'm just going to keep it. Uh, I don't think we'll run into any problems. All right, so uh, yeah, and there are 3,221. Actually, I remember them listing them. I feel like they listed 3,224 where there are three mysterious missing tags, but uh, that's that's data science, you know. Um, all right, so we know the most common tags. We know the most common um, the paintings with the most things in them. Um, I wonder if actually we can pull some of these up. I would love to see them. Uh, yeah, apparently. Let's just, uh, let's get this, let's treat ourselves. Okay, oh, this was a terrible mistake. I've made a terrible choice. Uh, look for, uh, so sorry for bringing you to this place. Uh, yeah, I think this is it. So Lakeside Cabin, a real beauty right here. Um, so this has, uh, it looks like it has 22 uh, things in it. Um, wow, something about this is really uh, causing my computer to get very hot. So um, let's see, Lakeside. I'm going to grab just that one. Um, Actually, we could just do Bob Ross. I'm going to filter her title. is Lakeside Cabin. I also worry it might have quotes inside this string. Let's see. Um, I'll... You know what? I wonder if it... I think it might have strings inside of it. So, let's see. Okay. Yes. And there are, in fact, looks like two Lakeside. All right, this is an important discovery. There are two Lakeside Cabin episodes. So I've made a terrible assumption, which is that titles are unique. It looks like some episodes uh, have the same title. So let's count episode. All right. Um, and what I'm going to do here is I'm also going to count titles so that we can see it. Uh, all right, so it looks like actually there's a different one that has the most features, most tags, it's Mountain Oval. Uh, Alright, let's not. Um, maybe we can get to it? Let's see. Bob Ross, Mountain Oval. Um, I realize this isn't the most glamorous part of doing analysis, but it's important, I think, to um, check our assumptions before we start. Alright, so this is Mountain Oval. Uh, I'm kind of, to be honest, surprised that, uh, I guess it checks more boxes. Um, this one doesn't have a mountain in the background. Maybe that really 
introduces a lot of opportunities. I think also they code plural mountains so that uh, it sounds like having trees and mountains in a stream really puts it uh, ahead. All right. Oh, these are this is exactly what I needed. Um, okay. So we know how we know the size of the data. We know the most the episodes with the most tags. Um, we know the tags that are used the most. Um, I'm gonna actually set that to five. Uh, they're all top four are tree related um, and then uh, we know there are 3,221 tags uh, we also learned that uh, I'm gonna put a note here uh, titles titles can episodes can have the same titles there we go um, Great, and then it's a little smaller. Um, all right, let's keep going. So we learned a little bit more about it. I'm gonna just put a provisional title in, then a nice ABC. Um, all right, so Tidy Ross, nope, Tidy Bob. Um, all right, let's see. So I'm curious about, um, let's do a plot, we listed out the tags. Um, I really like this plot here. Let's see. About the most common things. Um, notice that these actually top five are the ones we listed, so we could do a plot like this. Um, let's give it a shot. Uh, count, title. I wish I should actually uncaps. Um, I'm gonna go back and quickly uh, what I need to do is, um, you know what, this is, this is one that's actually a little bit easier to just do in pandas. The reason I did this is I can, um, use black cell magic. No, I can't. Um, here, we need to load the extension, so, uh, I'm actually going to put that here, but I'll heat up a lot of stuff for myself. Okay. Yeah, it's loaded. Um, boom. Oh, you know what? It's not so long. It says I should put it on one line. So we're back to where we started. Um, so black, what this cell magic does uh, is it reformats your code using the black uh, Python formatter. Um, okay. But the one thing I do want to do, I'm just going to mutate it here. Uh, dot columns. So we can use, um, so if we get the columns here, pandas has a thing where you can use dot string to um, say lowercase everything. So these are like vector wise um, operations. And then we'll just mutate it for now. Um, great. So now this has all lowercase uh, column names. Yep, having a good time. Tag. All right. Um, so I'm gonna go to the title. Oh no, this is actually this is the original data frame that I didn't uh, fix. Okay, so we're back. Um, let's generate this plot. So we wanna. count the most common tags uh, then we want to um, oh you know what we just want to ship it to ggplot this is a this is from plot 9 um, which we've already imported um, so I'm just going to the x-axis will be tag the y-axis will be n we use a geom point, uh, close this. The reason I put these together was so I could use black formatting. Alright, again, not so long that it can't be on a single line. Um, Alright, so weird things. Notice that uh, we're having a little bit of trouble here. Um, we get some warnings. Uh, what 
what I think the best thing to do is uh, just use this code that suppresses warnings for now. Um, I think they're useful to have when you're running an analysis, but once you figure out uh, where the warnings are coming from, um, I think you want to probably suppress them. So, yeah. So that's that. And then um, another thing we can do is um, let's do uh, cohort flip. And now I think we actually can do black formatting. Yes. All right. Cohort flip. That'll rotate it. Oh, where did it go? Let's see here. Okay, so this is getting a little bit closer. Um, the other thing is that notice they, um, oh, first they do like bars, that's fine. Um, they also order their columns in the plot. So the question is, how can we order this plot? Um, notice we had already sorted it, but it doesn't, that's not how it works with ggplot and with plot9. So what we need to do is we need to use a factor. And what I'll do is, um, so essentially what we want is, um, sorry, this, here, I'll put this here. Um, so we want this uh, to be in this order. Um, we need to make a pandas categorical with, with this ordering. Um, so let's mutate this. I'm just going to format right now. Uh, all right, uh, let's do, I'm going to call it something else for now. Uh, uh, yep. And then, um, dot as type, I think we do categorical. Let's find out. I think this, uh, this might be wrong. Let's find out. Uh, I've made a terrible mistake. Oh, sorry. Uh, Okay, so categorical not understood. I think uh, pandas as type categorical. Let's see here. Um, as type category. There we go. So, all right. So this is a category. Um, we could ask what order it's in. Um, let's see. So I'm just gonna do this for now. New tags. I'm gonna grab it. Uh, it's categorical. Uh, it's notice it's by default ordered alphabetically. Um, okay, so that's challenging. Um, what we want to do is uh, we want to order it by these counts. Um, so by n. So what we can do is uh, I'm going to use a suba. Um, from suba.dplyd. These things probably need to be moved around out of uh, in suba, but um, I'm gonna import something called factor reorder. This is based off of a package in R called forcats that does this kind of thing. So what we can do is um, now we can use factor reorder to create uh, both create this factor um, and to choose an order for it. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll order it by the n column. I might need to reverse it. Let's see how this goes. All right, new tags. Okay, great. And uh, let's see, is new tag in the right order? Um, it's not. So this needs to be probably negative. Yes. Notice that tree now is um, ordered by n. Or these tags are ordered by um, the most common to show up. So new tags. Now it's tree, trees. Um, it's actually in this order that we see here. Um, the thing is that we could actually just replace the tag, probably, um, especially if we're using it in a pipe. So uh, I'm going to put this mutate in now. Uh, great. And then, so hopefully this will help us uh, put it in the right order. I cord flipped it. Actually, that might have been the wrong. Yeah, all right. So we actually needed to order it by um, least common or most disorder. All right, um, let's change this to a bar. Nope, 
Sorry, that was wrong. Uh, GM call. Great. This is uh, it's getting there. I realize that it's not. It's a pretty crammed plot. Uh, they have bridge at the bottom. Where's bridge? Let's find out how f how far they actually go down this plot. So uh, I'm just gonna uh, copy all this really fast. Oh, I also actually need to grab this. Uh, in here. Um, I'm just going to grab part of this pipe to experiment with. I think um, take this out. Uh, I'll also take this out. I just want to know um, where bridge is. So, uh, bridge. I don't know. Let's see. Is it lowercase? Oh, it's all uppercase. I bet there's a little bit of formatting. Bridge has seven tags. Here it has two. I don't. It must have been uh, maybe polished a little bit. Maybe someone went in and uh, spruced it up. So let's see. I'm curious what the the lowest uh, is here. Oh, you know what? I haven't implemented tail, so I failed you. Um, let's just look wood framed. Um, I think what we should do is maybe cap it at, let's cap it at, um, at waterfall. I also have a very small bug in Suba I need to fix. Um, all right, let's see. So I'm, you know, what, I'm just going to say n less than 39 and uh, be done with it. So we'll say uh, filter not less. We want to keep rows where n is greater than 39. Great. It's a pretty good plot. Um, all right. So now we're in business. Um, we can add a. I think we should also add a title. Uh, let's see. What do we got here? I'll just the paintings of Bob Ross. I would say uh, maybe frequency of tags in Bob Ross paintings. Great. And um, we could also, we could change these axes. Uh, I'm just going to leave them. No. Uh, my boss Dave would want me to give them names. And so give them names I shall. Uh, Oh, that didn't work. Oh, N isn't a thing. Yeah, X and Y. So these are names for the axes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run black one more time and see if it, if it usually it'll. Yep, that's great. So it cleaned up the code a little bit. Now we have a nice, very straightforward pipe here. I, to be honest, I like this sort of syntax. I'm partial for things trying like this, but I can't really complain. The formatting's really good by this cell magic, um, and it takes a lot of the effort I would say out of um, it's nice to just get it in a pretty good place and then if you want tweak it where you want or if you're collaborating people with people maybe keep it there and have really consistent formatting all right let's run it um, great so we counted the tags we did some quick checks um, there was an interesting thing I saw about uh, I think it was um, how often Given that there's a tree, how likely is it that there are multiple trees? And so that's an interesting issue of conditional probability. Um, to preface, conditional probability says that uh, probability of, say, A given B, tree given trees, is uh, probability of tree and trees. Uh, divided by probability of um, the thing on the right, so trees. Uh, this is useful to see in a Venn diagram. Um, maybe I'll, I'll go back and put something like that in. Um, so what we can do is we can ask with our counts, we can, um, what should we do? Oh, you know what? Uh, 
It could be easy. Yeah, we need to tabulate. I think that uh, maybe this raw data frame will be easier for now. So, um, you know what, we could just, uh, it's a little weird to work out uh, on the spot. Uh, I'm just going to, oh, wow. Apparently I should have named it Tidy Ross because that is my default. So um, I'm going to count the tags. I'm going to filter out where uh, the tag dot um, is in. This is just a pandas um, column series method um, is in a tree or trees. Let's see this. Great. And then we can just actually do it manually. So um, uh, this is just Oh, that was wrong. Um, uh, um, so uh, all the ones with trees are here. Oh, we need to know that it's... Uh, sorry, this is actually the wrong. This is a silly one. We want to know that it's trees given tree. And that only that changes it here. So we want to know how many trees are there. How often are... Um, trees so of all the tree ones um, so we need to know that uh, we need to look at only cases where um, what we need to do is we need to count trees and then we also need to count where for example uh, both these things occur so for simplicity let's just uh, Um, what can we do? I'm, I'm really sp doing a bad job here. So, uh, we want to know that, uh, given you saw a tree, what's the chance you also saw trees? We want to know where you saw tree and trees. Let's take, um, the regular data frame, Bob Ross and let's filter it where tree equals one and uh, and that's what this does by default the comma and trees equals one All right. Uh, okay I've done something awful this is, these are all in caps um, alright so tree and trees is one and then um, you know what normally we would just uh, count it I need to fix, and I'll do this right after, SUBA should, when there's no argument, just do a, a raw count. I think that something we could do to work around it right now would just be to create an arbitrary column that's always one. Um, uh, dummy column. It's a bad, leaves a bad taste in my mouth. I'll fix it uh, after. So, um, all right, so there are 337 cases Oh, I guess this makes sense because every time you see trees, you know that you've seen at least one tree. So this is actually the joint um, tree and trees. All right, well, we did a lot of work uh, to get that number. Um, so I'm also I'm going to print then. Um, so that's it. It's 337 divided by... Um, 361. Yep, that's great. I'm going to round this. Does that... I actually can't remember... Oh, that was... I tried to round a print. So that's embarrassing. Um, great, and then I think we can choose the decimals. Yeah, so it's like a 95%. Does that agree? 93%. Uh, yep. Um, yeah, so it's unlikely you're going to have a lonely tree. The probability that you have multiple trees, uh, given that you have seen a single tree, is very high. So trees have friends is the take home. Um, all right. Uh, I'm going to put in here just a note. So 
we can keep track of it. Uh, oh no, that's not a good thing. Uh, do trees have yeah, friends? Great. Um, I'm gonna label this one. Uh, most common tags. Great. Um, okay, cool. So I wonder what other questions can we ask? Let's go back to this data set. We know we have 400 paintings, 69 tags. Um, I would, I'm kind of curious. Uh, I, I'm curious about some of the most common words um, in this. So what we can do here is we can take Bob Ross. Um, I'm just going to... So notice that the titles here, we could um, split the sentence into words. Um, I believe that it's something like this. Uh, oh, uppercase. Yeah, notice that this creates a list of um, words. Uh, this is a series. Again, I would say that I really prefer to have everything put into a data frame. So I'm going to say split title equals. I'm also actually just going to select the episode. Fortunately, these are all uppercase. I've run out of patience for it, though, um, for fixing. Um, OK, so yeah. Notice we have the episode, we have the title, we have the split title. Um, now, really ideally, what we'd want to have happen is, um, oh, this wasn't split. Was this split? Uh, okay, let me, um, let's see. I'm curious about uh, if I actually just think it's split. Let's see. I'm just going to grab the first. No, there it is. So it looks fine. This is the first entry. Um, I, I do kind of want to strip out the quotes. Uh, let's do that in a second. So what I'm going to do here is I'm now going to take, um, I'm going to use uh, unnest here. And what that does is it will take this, um, here, let me show you split words, split words. It will take this column of split titles and it will make each entry in this list here its own row, each entry in this list here its own row, and duplicate the info from here. So this will be like A, entry A, entry walk, entry in, entry the, entry woods, um, will each be their own rows with the episode listed here. So we know that we'll know they're all season one episode um, entries. All right, so let's do that, split title. Oh, I need a closing paren. Oh, no, I've done something wrong. Uh, let's see. Oh, you need... um. No, I'm not actually sure. I think maybe unnest... Uh, you know what? I need to implement uh, a slight twist. I need to support um, being able to select columns like that. Uh, right now it expects a, a string. But this is what it returns. So notice that now... Um, each word is its own entry. So, uh, actually, I'm just going to, I'm going to anticipate that. I'm going to name this word and then unnest it. So now, when we look, uh, rather than having a list, everything's been spread out. Um, now let's um, count. Uh, let's, let's need to do that in somewhere else. Oops, that's not what I want to do. Great. Um, you know what? We can just do it here. Let's count the words. So, hello? Oh, yep. Uh, yep. And then let's sort it. No, that's not. Yeah, it, as you might expect, the word the is um, most common. Uh, we can strip those out. Uh, the other thing is that there are really good libraries to do things like this. Um, but, um, Let's see, so what's the best way for us to do it? Let's actually just do it here. Uh, that's fine, so. Um, 
we're just going to replace these any quotes with uh, nothing. I'm going to I'll do single quotes so it's clear. Um, great. So now we're in. Um, let's also filter out some of the um, uh, what are they called uh, articles and uh, I actually forgot the term for these. Uh, the like smaller. Uh, generally less interesting words. Um, so what we'll do is, so here we want it to not be in something. So uh, not is in. Um, let's grab just a few. The uh, of in at. Uh, I think that's basically all I want. A. Yeah, I feel good about that. Um, Cool, so let's keep going. Um, all right, so you can see that most, the most common word in a title is mountain, followed by winter and oval, autumn, lake. Mm, a lot of stuff that you might expect uh, uh, someone who's painting outdoor scenery to um, use. So uh, I think because I'm, I just wanna quickly reproduce this, I'm going to copy this plot in, um, I'm going to, save this uh, title word count great and um, I'm just gonna put the ggplot down here all right great here we go um, notice I need to swap out tag for word um, we still have n um, we're gonna run into the same problem we had with uh, these obviously got to go. Let's just keep this. Hey, you know what? Let's. Um, I'm gonna comment this whole line for now. Notice that the convenient thing about having an operator on each line is you can just comment out whole lines. Um, there are way too many tags. We need to filter out. Uh, let's just. What we're gonna do is we already sorted. Um, let's just keep the top. Uh, I don't know. 10, 15 words. Um, let's do this. The other thing, notice they're not sorted. Again, we can use the same strategy as before. Uh, mutate. Oh. Yeah, I need to... I, I do want to do some slight tweaking over how um, code is, is formatted and indents uh, happen. Uh, word. Uh, we're just going to reorder this. Cool. So now we have this plot. Um, I'm going to uncomment this label. Um, most common. Mm, I guess if I put frequency here, frequency of words in. I'm going to now just cut this out. Painting titles. Uh, you know, I'm going to call this most common words in painting titles. X is now word, Y is now number of words. Uh, you know, one fun thing to do is also to add a subtitle. I feel like those really uh, are underutilized fun thing. So, um, uh, it's all about those mountains. Yo. Oh, you know what? Maybe uh, discovery. I think actually maybe um, it doesn't have it. Let's try caption. Ah, uh, yeah. I'll have to check uh, plot nine um, subtitle. Or actually, let's try caption. Looks like uh, it's still in the works. Um, I'd say overall, though, plot nine is a really good library. The Maintainer, the creator maintainer, has UK1. Um, seems to be really responsive. So, uh, yeah, I, I have no doubt that they're, uh, they're, if it could be done, they would have done it quickly. Uh, that's not to say, though, I'm sure they'd love uh, contributions. Um, all right, let's just take this out. We gave it a good run. Um, I'm going to reformat this. Maybe it'll be better, maybe it'll be worse. All right. Cool. So, you know, baby steps. Um, 
I'm gonna label this three most common uh, word in painting titles. Great. Um, let's keep going. Um, so let me take a look at the this again, and let me think about where we could go with this. So. <clears throat> Uh, you know, we could look at, as a season progresses, we could look at maybe different counts um, for things. So that's a kind of tricky one. Seasons are coded here. Um, let's see, tags um, grouped by season. Um, it's tricky right here. We need to split out uh, the season and episode. I think that... Um, I. I might have to end up looking this up a little bit. I think that what we want to do is um, I'm going to pull out episode into a, its own series so I can... Uh, that was wrong. Okay. Uh, yep, all, all uppercase. I, I really should have changed these, to be honest, to begin with. Uh, they're going to come back to haunt me every step of the way. So... Uh, I think one thing you can do, so we could either use apply uh, with a lambda and, um, not, we don't need that, but uh, I mean we could actually, let me show this, so we could do, um, now this is just a string, each entry dot split uh, by E or something, you know, there, that's pretty good, that gets you the season and episode, uh, you probably want a uh, you know, you really want this to be gone. Um, let me also just note, you can take this lambda out if we're using suba, so the underscore... Oh, I failed. Uh, yep. That this works also. Uh, this is just the suba's underscore object. Show you. Yep. So this is an operation. Uh, this is the sort of symbolic representation of it. Um, Alright, let's see. So we're splitting. Um, with pandas, what we can do is we can use uh, episode.string. Uh, I believe it's match. I'm going to pull it up. I didn't need to view the code too. But, um, so, ah, uh, there are no. Usually they have a pretty good documentation. Let me. Um, yeah, let's see. So, uh, it's extract, I think. Let's see. And this one, I think, has a lot of documentation. Uh, yeah, this will be fine. So here, notice these are two things they're matching, um, like the letter and then the number following it. What we can do is we want to extract the, so it's season followed by uh, any number of, uh, oh, crap, I forgot. Uh, how this works in Python, 0 through 9, and then it's episode followed by anything 0 through 9. There's one issue with as it's, as it's written now, this will only match one um, thing. Let's do plus, at least one number after each, Let's see what happens. Great, so we pulled them out. Um, also creates new columns, that's pretty cool. Uh, All right, so uh, what we'll want to do here is um, let's do Bob Ross. Uh, you know, the other trick is that here, it's kind of funny that Extract created a data frame. Um, other things create lists. Uh, it's, it's kind of tough. It'd be nice if there were a little more consistency. I think you can set expand not to true, though, to false. False is, oh, maybe not. Yeah, I don't know. So um, what we're going to do is uh, Bob Ross. You know, let's just uh, I would actually like even to use the tidy bob here. So mutate. Um, I think because life is short, what I'm going to do for now is uh, I'm just going to write 
run this twice um, since it's a pretty small data set uh, and I don't really want to think about uh, how to pull these out so this is a column I don't know if this is a the trick is that this data frame this is named O. I, I think this is actually a number, so what I have to use is I think dot loc. Uh, there might be a better way to do this, but I think that it's um, this. Um, okay, and then for episode, let's do this. Whatever, here we go. For episode, um, I'm just going to copy this for now. Uh, and I'll, I'm definitely going to take it back to my workshop and think more about uh, this workflow. So, uh, yep. Let me put this here. Let's just see if it runs. Nope. Uh, this is an R syntax. Yeah. So now we have episode and season. Um, oh, you know what? We overrode the... Uh, I do this. Ah, oh, that's that's gonna be too long. I don't think I'll. Um, but maybe it's just better to have that it that way. I'm gonna do episode num as a compromise. Uh, I don't want to be too ambiguous with it. Uh, great season number episode number. One thing we need to be careful about is um is uh this is um these are probably not um numeric. Uh, it's possible, but let's see. So, um, one thing we can do is so we can use Suba has a thing called pipe that just lets you, for example, similar to the a data frame has a pipe method also. So um, Bob Ross dot pipe just lets you pass a function. Um, for example, uh, I don't any function that could take Bob Ross the data frame. So Right, this is equivalent to actually just doing Bob Ross dot info. Um, okay, so similar, Suba has a special pipe implementation here. Um, the reason I'm doing this is I want to see this info also. So let's do this. Um, notice actually Suba doesn't have to. Again, we could omit this and use the underscore. I think. Yeah. Um, just for brevity, and uh, so this is season number, episode number, are not um, numerics. So what we can do here, you know, the simplest way is probably just to keep this party going and uh, make them ints here. We don't need quotes around this. Uh, all right. Um, okay, so we used pandas to convert them to ints. Um, you don't really see it. The funny thing is the output doesn't really change, but it'll be important both for performance and also um, just you can hit small kind of uh, roadblocks without it. Uh, okay, so with this out of the way, I'm going to use black. It, this might be funky. Nope. Um, that's not bad. Uh, we would definitely want to do some formatting uh, down the road. Uh, this is the first time I've saved this document. Um, that's great. Uh, okay, so we have uh, season number, episode number. Uh, I'm going to call this grouped Bob. We know from experience I should call it grouped Ross. Uh, we'll see how that plays out. Um, grouped Bob. And then what we're going to do is we're going to... Now we're going to count by season number. Uh, and uh, we're going to count um, tag. Great. And let's. Uh, we don't really want to. You know, now we want to sort within season, so we're going to use an arrange. Uh, I'm going to sort first by season number, then by n. No, by reverse n, so negative uh, n. All right. So season one, the top tag is um, tree. Uh, maybe every season the top tag is tree. Great. Yep. So, uh, I think tree just rules everything. Let's see. So, um, what I'm going to do is, 
Now I need to grab, so what I want to do is I want to grab the top three within each uh, season. And what I'm going to do is, um, so now I'm going to uh, group by season number, and then I'm going to filter. And what this will do is instead of doing it over the whole data, it will now do it just within each of these groups. So um, I know it's already sorted by season number and N. Uh, so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to uh, actually, what's happening? Uh, I want the first three. What I'm going to do here is um, I'm embarrassed that I can't remember how to get the row number. Luckily, Su I implemented it in Suba at one point. So, uh, import row number. Um, let's put this on its own line. Comment it out. We're going to use black to format it in a second. I did something terribly wrong. Uh, yep. Nope. Uh, yep, suba.dpy suba import vector row number. What this does is um, these are pretty raw right now. I haven't done a lot with them. A lot of times they're just to um, help. Yeah, so this uses NPA range just to count up to um, the length of a vector. So for example, uh, if we have Bob Ross uh, dot episode. I'm actually going to grab it, just a small set of it. Um, say to row 10. Nope. Dot I loc. Nope. Yeah. Uh, episode. What this does is it basically takes the length of episode and then it uses numpy. to do an A range from, I don't know, some range along there. I am, I'm guessing 1 to um, N plus 1. Yeah. And so how we can use this, it's an open question whether that should be uh, row number 0 for sure. Um, open to it. So um, I'm going to do row number. This vectorized functions here, things that take single, um, so row number. Uh, that return a vector often need just like an underscore. This tells it that it's a, a s symbolic call. So uh, that row number shouldn't be run right away. Sorry, row number could be run on raw data. Right? That generates a result. What this does is it tells it, hey, we need to wait uh, to actually evaluate row number. Um, so, yep. Row number... Um, of say dot episode. I think my computer's gonna die. I had a tremendous amount of battery when we started. Uh, okay, so row numbers less than four. Oh, I did something terribly wrong. Okay, really got a lowercase those. Next time, I promise to. Ah, oh, we don't. This doesn't matter too much. Actually, I think it can be lowercase too. But notice now we have the top three um, of each one grabbed out. It's not very exciting. It looks like trees wins. Although it looks like um, one interesting thing I'm seeing here is that the type of tree uh, seems up for debate. Uh, whether it's a deciduous tree or a conifer. Um, I think that what I'm seeing is that trees will always rule, but um, maybe the type of tree or whoever's in third place might shift. Um, so there's the question of how we represent this. Uh, unfortunately, my laptop is dying, and this booth that I'm in has no power to it. So let's see if I can do this before uh, everything just catastrophically shuts down. Uh, okay, um, this is the count. Uh, right. Oh, you know what? Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna grab a new booth with power just for you 
for all the great members of the audience. Okay. I'm juiced up. Uh, one note, you might hear some fan noise. Uh, it's good times. So, um, what I'm going to do is... I also realized I could have just ranked uh, N here. But I'm in too deep. Um, one thing I'm going to do, though, is I'm just going to... I guess I'll just mutate in the rank. So, uh, okay. I would say relying on... Let's do this. Well, how do we do... I can't remember how to do a dense rank in pandas. I think maybe they have it available. Let's see. Episode dot rank. And then um, method dense. All right. So what we should do is um, I think the best thing to do, good practice, is probably um, to do n dot dense or er, rank method equals dense. So then we have an explicit ranking. Um, I'm going to put that here. Rank equals and then rather than row number we'll we'll, um, we'll just filter on rank. Oh, I did something wrong. Uh, mutated it. Everything. Oh, yep. So here. Great. Nope. Okay. Let's see. Uh, oh, you know what? Pandas doesn't let you... This is my bad. I should refer to the column like this. Uh, pandas, if it's between a method and a um, column name, pandas favors the method. Um, okay, so that's the rank. Uh, I'd rather have it as a integer because I think the dense ranks can't... Um, I don't think they'll... Uh, do in between ranks. So, um, great. Notice that there still could be, you could actually have four or five ranks, even if you do rank under four with a dense rank, because I think ties are assigned the lowest possible. So you'll always have one, two, three rankings, but you might have multiple entries with the ranking three. Um, so, um, this is great. Uh, we filtered. And we grouped. Notice that this is a group data frame, so it's showing a preview to us. Actually, this is a Suba did a little a bit of finagling um, to make this happen. Um, all right, rank less than four. Oh, a lot of things are tied. Yeah, that's what it is. Um, but you know what? These are also um, it looks like, let's see here, surprising thing is that, um, I wonder if it's, is this ranked in the, you know, I think this is in the opposite order, uh, let's see if we can do a, um, descending, yeah, we did an ascending, uh, Great. Yeah, this is a little bit better. So, um, yeah, notice here that tree and trees are tied, but with a dense rank, they get the same ranking of one because they're the top most common. Um, okay, so we've got our ranks. Um, why don't we just? I'm interested in. Um, wow, how can we do this? Maybe we can just count again and see, like, who's in the top three. How many are the different? tags in the top three. So, you know what, we can, uh, you know, I think that I have a slight thing I need to fix with count. Um, so I'm ungrouping, so removing the groupings. Now we can see how many seasons um, have different uh, values. Yeah, great. So this is mostly, sorry, I should be talking, um, yeah, I think actually I'll stop here. I, I think there are interesting plots we could do, like a punch card or something, um, but I don't want to take up more time, so um, let's just sort this. We can see now that 
virtually, basically, I think all seasons have a uh, tree in them. Uh, the types of trees differ um, between deciduous and conifer. And then sometimes clouds make it in over types of trees, uh, rivers, lakes, grass, mountains. But it's clear trees and trees, even on a per season basis, uh, seem to rule the roost. All right, so thanks for tuning in. Um, I'll be really interested. I'd love to hear any feedback on Suba. It's something I want to work on um, and uh, something I want to tune to make sure that it fits people's workflows. I'll keep doing Tidy Tuesday analyses. Um, I think it's good to just encounter everyday problems and to see what arises. Um, there are always surprises. I think the way to tune a library is to do realistic analyses um, and see if it, it improves that process. So that that's what I'll be using as the benchmark. Um, I'd love feedback, um, issues, best pull requests, an absolute delight. I'll take those. Um, and thanks a lot for tuning in.